He leaned back in his chair, polished oak table between us, the boardroom heavy with his perfume of arrogance. Your little experiment is worthless, he said. My wife sat beside him, eyes lowered, pretending neutrality. She didn't flinch. She never did. He signed the last page of the acquisition agreement with deliberate flourish, sliding the pen across the polished surface. That's when my phone buzzed. Just once. A vibration sharp enough to cut the room in half. Quantum Tech patent approved. Bidding starts at $3.7 billion. I didn't smile wide. Just enough. Just enough for him to notice. About that signature, I whispered. I wasn't supposed to be here. Not at this table. Not in this family. I was the engineer, the outsider who married into legacy money. He never respected me. To him, I was the stray dog his daughter brought home. At first, he tolerated me. He even toasted our wedding, with a glass raised higher for his shareholders than for us. But tolerance turned to contempt when I refused to abandon my project, the quantum encryption model I had been building for years. He called it a toy. He called it a distraction. My wife called it his obsession. She said it when she thought I couldn't hear, but I did, every word. I wanted to believe she was caught between us, that she played neutral out of survival. But the night I found her name on an internal memo, recommended transfer of IP rights, subject unfit for commercial leadership, I stopped pretending. She hadn't chosen me. She had chosen him. It was the password change that gave her away. Our shared server, my work, suddenly locked. She laughed when I asked, said I was paranoid. But paranoia doesn't lie. I checked the logs. Midnight downloads. Her IP address. And the next morning, a draft acquisition contract between my father-in-law's conglomerate and one of his shell companies. The experiment wasn't worthless. It was priceless. They just wanted me erased from the equation. That was the night my pulse stopped racing with hurt and started ticking like a clock. Cold. Mechanical. Precise. I didn't confront. Not then. Not ever. Anger wastes energy. Revenge multiplies it. First, I split the core code base. One version, the one she stole, looked polished, complete, but hidden inside was rot. Quantum simulations that collapsed under real load. Enough to tank any early investor demo. Enough to ruin his credibility. The real code, the working one, I buried in plain sight. Registered it quietly, under a different corporate entity. Not mine, not hers. An offshore trust tied to a name they wouldn't think twice about. Then, I built silence. Months of playing the fool. I attended dinners, smiled at their jokes, nodded at his dismissals, pretended not to notice when my wife's phone lit up with late-night texts from her father. They thought I was weak. They thought I was blind. But I was building the trap. Every patent filing, every timestamp, every encrypted backup trail leading back to me. The meeting was his idea, his theater. He wanted the board to witness my surrender, to see me stripped of dignity as he rescued the company from his useless son-in-law. The acquisition papers were thick, hundreds of pages. His lawyers drafted them with the precision of predators. Once this is signed, he said, you can finally move on from your distractions. My wife nodded subtly, as if she'd been waiting for me to cave. But I wasn't caving. I was handing him the loaded gun, knowing the barrel was turned inward. He signed. I let him. Then the phone buzzed. The patent approval came through at the exact second his pen left the paper. Perfect timing. Not luck. Design. His lawyers looked confused as I slid my phone across the table. The board members leaned in. The headline glowed like fire on the screen. Quantum encryption patent approved. Initial global bidding begins at $3.7 billion. I watched his smile falter. About that signature, I said, calm, measured, you've just acquired the wrong company. 
The real patent isn't yours. It never was. What you hold, I tapped the stack of papers, is liability, non-functional code, registered fraud. Silence. Heavy. Deadly. One board member coughed. Another adjusted his tie. My wife's face drained of color. He lunged for the contract, flipping through pages, eyes wide. What is this? Evidence, I said. Every page ties your company to stolen IP. Every signature traces back to you. Congratulations, you've acquired a multi-million dollar disaster. Meanwhile, I own the patent that the world wants. You're bluffing. I leaned forward, voice low enough only he could hear. Check the docket. Check the filings. The patent office doesn't bluff. His lawyers scrambled, phones out, fingers shaking as they searched. One by one, their faces went pale. My wife whispered, you set us up. I turned to her, expression flat. No, you set me up. I just finished the equation. The board dissolved into chaos, some shouting, some walking out. One investor already dialing his broker, eager to cut losses. My father-in-law sat frozen, pen still in hand, the ink of his downfall drying in front of him. His empire's stock would plummet the moment news broke. His reputation, built on dominance, was already ash. And my wife. She didn't beg, she didn't cry. She just stared, as if seeing me for the first time. But it was too late. I walked out of that boardroom, calm, measured, every step deliberate. Outside, the city roared, oblivious to the empire collapsing above them. I didn't look back. I didn't need to. By nightfall, the bidding war had already begun. Numbers climbing, journalists calling, lawyers offering congratulations. My name, not his, carved into the future of quantum tech. He once told me my little experiment was worthless. Now it was worth billions. And his signature, his arrogance, was the final nail in his own coffin. I gave him exactly what he thought he wanted. And, in doing so, I took everything he had. I never raised my voice, never broke character. Revenge doesn't need noise. It just needs precision.